the most charming small towns in the U.S. to visit during fall. The air is getting crisper, the leaves are starting to turn, and teenagers everywhere are lining up for pumpkin spice lattes. While a scenic road trip in the fall is always a good idea, one of our favorite ways to revel in the glories of autumn is to grab our weekend getaway bags and set up camp in a charming small town. We like to head to places with a big festival calendar, cute B&Bs, mom and pop shops galore, and extraordinary access to the great outdoors. What follows are suggestions for seven such small U.S. towns that come alive during fall, with added bonuses like whiskey saloons, rescue lions, and Viking cookery. Number 1. Grand Marais, Minnesota. The crown jewel of Lake Superior's North Shore, this 1,340-person town is the ultimate fall cornucopia, overflowing with delicious things to eat. Try the cinnamon sugar rings at the cheekily named World's Best Donuts or Puffy Fry Bread Tacos at Hungry Hippie Tacos. There's also lots to see. The striking Art Deco meets Cree Indian Dining Room at Nanny Buju Lodge, by Teak Spoons and Handsome Made in Minnesota Canoe Paddles at the Upstate, and do take a printmaking or beginner photography class at the long-running Grand Mary Art Colony. From late September, the artistically inclined can pop by open studios and galleries during the area's annual art along the Lake Fall Studio Tour. The lung-busting hike to Devil's Kettle Falls at Judge C.R. Magny State Park will take you the better part of a morning, but the payoff is a mysterious waterfall to nowhere. At Grand Portage State Park, just shy of the Canadian border, you'll find the highest waterfall, 70 feet, in Minnesota. Only this one is far easier to reach. Another must. Make the 30-mile drive out to Poplar House, a rustic restaurant, lodge, and craft liquor store off the scenic Gunflint Trail. Number 2. Park City, Utah. Less than 40 minutes from Salt Lake City is a ski town, population, 8,504, that is agreeable even when there isn't snow on the ground, or movie screening with Sundance. Catch it in the fall shoulder season for lower room rates and a fraction of the crowds. Check into Park City Peaks Hotel, a modern lodge peppered with Mad Men era furniture, and then take off for Round Valley, a 700-acre nature area with more than 30 miles of mountain biking trails. If you prefer viewing fall foliage by car, try the 7-mile Guardsman Pass route. Back in Park City's historic old town, walk Main Street, which is packed with independently owned shops, cafes, and galleries. Scout for SLC made porter ceramics and mahogany-lined journals by Woodchuck at Park City Mercantile. Or take a caffeine break at minimalist chic pink elephant coffee roasters. Or visit the High West Distillery and Saloon, located on nearby Park Avenue, to try a tipple fashioned with its aged whiskies. We recommend the main-style seafood rolls at Freshies Lobster Company or generously portioned tacos, sopas, tortas, and tamales from Mexican grocery Anaya's Market. Number 3. Lambertville, New Jersey. Visiting Lambertville is like getting two sweet towns in one, as it sits across the Delaware River from the equally charming New Hope, Pennsylvania. Most visitors glide back and forth throughout their stay, you can walk across the bridge between the two and they're only three miles apart. But you'd be wise to stay at the Bridge Street House. The historic B&B was built in 1850 and fully renovated in 2016. It has three rooms and two suites, plus a gallery showcasing work by local artists. Parking is free and the house is walkable to everything in downtown Lambertville. That means you can easily see an indie flick at the nearby Acme screening room, get lost among the rare and out-of-print tomes at Panoply Books, or dig into a platter of juicy, Texas-style brisket from more than Q. Dozens of quirky art galleries and packed to the rafters antiques shops line the streets of Lambertville and New Hope, but more discerning shoppers should make a beeline to Rago Arts and Auction Center. The auction house was founded by expert appraiser and antiques roadshow star David Rago. Its lineup for fall dabbles in mid-century modern furniture and 20th-century ceramics and glass. If you want to immerse yourself in nature, the Delaware and Raritan Canal State Park is five minutes from Lambertville on the Jersey side. Here you can canoe, picnic, bicycle, hike, horseback ride, or fish for perch and pickerel. On the New Hope side of the river, Bowman's Hill Wildflower Preserve is flush with colorful fall foliage. In October, the beech trees, black oaks, and maples turn yellow, red, and purple. Come November, 
you can see wild senna, witch hazel, and juniper berries on eastern red cedars. Number 4. Eureka Springs, Arkansas. This 2,091 resident town has been on the radar of conservative Christians for half a century. Its two biggest attractions, a 67-foot-tall Christ of the Ozarks statue, modeled after Rio de Janeiro's Christ the Redeemer, and an enormous outdoor amphitheater that stages the Great Passion Play from April through October, are spectacles to behold, regardless of your religious leanings. That said, you don't have to plan a getaway around Holy Land tours and Bible museums to find beauty in this corner of the Ozarks. The entire downtown of Eureka Springs is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Admire the preserved Victorian architecture and make special note of Hatchet Hall, the former clapboard home of hatchet-wielding temperance movement leader Carrie A. Nation, St. Elizabeth of Hungary Catholic Church, which visitors enter through the bell tower and the Palace Hotel and Bathhouse Spa, which harkens back to Eureka's glory days as a 19th-century hot springs boomtown. Restored mansions now function as delightful bed and breakfasts. Lock in one of nine rooms at the Five Ojo Inn to experience southern hospitality at its finest. Less than 20 minutes from downtown is the Turpentine Creek Wildlife Refuge, which provides a forever home to abandoned, abused, and neglected big cats. Another draw just north of the town is the Thorn Crown Chapel, a soaring wood and glass sanctuary designed by architect E. Fay Jones. Number 5. Takitna, Alaska. From March through August, Itty Bitty Takitna, population, 946, is positively swarmed with visitors. First come the climbers, trying to summit majestic Denali in Denali National Park. Then come the cruise ship tourists, disembarking in Seward and taking packed sightseeing trains up to Fairbanks, stopping at the Takitna Depot en route. Most of the insanity wraps up by mid-September, which makes early fall a brilliant time to check out this laid-back mountain town. Takitna has limited lodging, but it's easier to book in the off-season. The family-owned Denali Fireside Cabins and Suites is walking distance from the town, and each rustic log cabin has a private covered deck and gas fireplace. Although some businesses here operate seasonally, you'll always find a cold beer and a hot sandwich at the Denali Brew Pub. Tip order the Aleutian with blackened Alaskan cod and melted cheddar on a brioche bun. This regular menu item deserves an A+. Stop by the Takitna Historical Society Museum, open on weekends only from mid-September, to learn about the town's trapping, gold mining, and homesteading past, and its original native inhabitants. Even the building, the Territory of Alaska Schoolhouse, opened in 1936, has a story to tell. Photographers will love ambling along Takitna's rutted dirt roads lined with cabins, but for a closer look at a rambling old homestead, Sign up for an ATV tour with Alaska Wilderness Adventurer. Lastly, splurge on an extraordinary flight scene tour of Denali National Park with K2 Aviation, a company that has been plumbing the Alaskan backcountry since the 1960s. Number 6. Beaufort, North Carolina. This sleepy little pearl on the southern outer banks is home to only 4,391 people. It's the third oldest town in North Carolina, on the Crystal Coast halfway between Virginia Beach and Myrtle Beach. Here you can explore artifacts salvaged from the shipwrecked Queen Anne's Revenge at the North Carolina Maritime Museums. Or wander the crumbling tombstones in Beaufort's oldest cemetery. Or go seashell hunting at the 2,315-acre Rachel Carson Coastal Estuarine Reserve, separated from downtown Beaufort by Taylor's Creek. There are two hiking trails within the reserve, but you can only walk the 1.1-mile outer loop trail at low tide. Follow the markers from Town Marsh and look for piping plover, herons, and egrets. For food, the weekly Old Beaufort Farmer's Market, set up in front of the Carteret County Courthouse, runs through November 25th. To explore farther afield, the Island Express Ferry Service drops passengers off at the uninhabited Shackleford Banks, the southernmost barrier island in Cape Lookout National Seashore, known for its wild horses. The Cape Lookout Light Station, with its unique black and white diamond print exterior, is another popular stop. Planning to spend time island hopping? Book a deluxe suite at the Pecan Tree Inn, a peaceful B&B kitted out with two-person jacuzzi tubs and Egyptian cotton towels. It's half a block from the boardwalk and yacht harbor. 
Number 7. Manchester, Vermont. No fall roundup would be complete without a shout-out to the nation's most autumnal state. From Dorset to Grafton to Montpelier to Stowe, Vermont really lucked out in the looks department. But the reason we suggest zeroing in on Manchester, a town hugged by southern Vermont's Taconic and Green Mountains, is its bounty of seasonal diversions. Drop your bags in one of 21 guest rooms at the Family Run Inn at Manchester. The four-acre property dates to the 1880s but wasn't converted into a guest house until 1978. Today's visitors rave about the homemade cottage cakes, luxurious bedding, and lovely grounds. From here, you can make the art rounds, tilting at Windmills Gallery, Southern Vermont Art Center, go pumpkin picking and hay riding at Equinox Valley Nursery, or visit Hill Dean, the mansion of Robert Todd Lincoln and one of the state's grandest examples of Georgian Revival architecture. Or shop for birch hexagon coasters, wood slab Lazy Susans, and other made-in-Vermont souvenirs at the more than 60-year-old Manchester Woodcraft. Cast a fly in the Batten Kill or Meadowee Rivers, or just learn about it in the American Museum of Fly Fishing. Work up an appetite on the popular 4.6-mile Lye Brook Falls Trail, the capstone of which is a 125-foot high waterfall, or summit the 3,848-foot Mount Equinox, the highest peak in the Taconic Range. Afterward, head down to Zoe's Double Hex for a juicy hamburger or over to the handsome Copper Grouse, where you can enjoy a local cheese plate, farm-to-table salad, or grilled Island Creek oysters with fennel and leek relish. If you're cobbling together your own hamlet hopping itinerary, be sure to build in stops at some famous covered bridges. The 117-foot Chiselville Bridge, spanning Roaring Branch Brook in Sunderland, and the oft-painted, 166-year-old bridge at the Green in West Arlington, are not to be missed. This fall discover the most enchanting small towns in the USA that come alive during the fall season. Immerse yourself in picturesque landscapes, vibrant foliage, and cozy atmospheres. Experience the charm of these hidden gems and create unforgettable autumn memories. Plan your fall getaway now. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share and subscribe.